With aging come conditions such as Alzheimer's or cardiovascular disease. Research being done at the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California, is investigating how to slow down the aging process. Dr. Andrew Dillon, associate professor in the Molecular and Cell Biology Laboratory, tells us about their findings. So our research is designed to understand the aging process so that we can delay the onset of age-related diseases. So Alzheimer's is one of those types of diseases that we study a lot. And the reason um, we're going after that is if you look at the greatest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, it's getting old. Um, and so if we can merely just slow the aging process, we could delay the onset of you know, a whole host of different diseases. Not only Alzheimer's disease, cancer, diabetes, um, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, we can hit a whole different set of diseases just by slowing down one process. It's been realized that genes actually control how long we live. And environment plays an important role, but more importantly, it's going to be your genetic makeup that's going to determine how long you live. And so uh, single gene alterations can greatly affect the aging process. Dr. Dillon told us about the goal of aging research. By discovering the genes that control the aging process, that now gives us a target to shoot at to make drugs to go after those particular genes. And so the idea here is we'd make a small molecule or a drug that would actually hit those genes to change the aging process. And the goal here is, we have to be very cautious here, the goal here is not to make people live to be 250 years old. The goal here is someone that's 60 years old that may be predisposed to have Alzheimer's disease to actually be able to live to be 80, 85 years old without the disease and have a normal lifespan. So it's not to make people actually live longer, it's actually to make people live healthier longer. That's the ultimate goal that we're going after. One of the hard parts about studying the aging process is that it can be an inherently long experiment. So if we were to do this in humans, you can imagine the experiments could take 60 to 100 years long to actually study the aging process. And so um, because what has been discovered in lower organisms, such as worms and flies and mice, is that the genetic makeup of those organisms are so incredibly similar to what's actually found in humans, is that we can study the aging processes in those animals because they live on the order of weeks to months to just a few years, so we can actually do experiments to study the aging process. So what, where we're at right now is that we know of genes and gene networks and drugs that can change the aging process of worms and flies and mice, and now we're at the stage now where, you know, can we actually go forward and actually test these in humans? Dr. Dillon tells us there has been success so far in this research. For the last 20 years, we've been working on trying to understand the genetics of aging and have such a handle on that that we could actually manipulate those genes to change an age onset disease. And that's what this work is, is shown to do, is that in a mouse that has Alzheimer's disease, if we go and change its genetic makeup to change its aging process, these animals are now free of Alzheimer's disease. They actually don't get it until all the control animals have actually died. So we greatly delay the onset of this disease, and it's a proof of principle that says, you know, lo looking at the aging process as a therapeutic avenue for treating an age onset, onset disease is actually viable. This will actually work. We are definitely in the five to ten year range where we're going to start seeing drugs that we're going after the aging process are going to be beneficial for age-related diseases. I think we're, we're getting closer, we're in the five to ten year period, that this will be the first announcement that this is actually going to be an avenue of research to go forward.